Thank you. Thank you. Wine to the people. Hey everybody, Keith, East Village Wine Geek here, and this video blog is a continuation of the Languedoc-Roussillon. The last video I did, I just talked about the history of the area, giving a general crash course on how this area has come to be and what's happening now. And for this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the, the different grapes that are used in the area, and then I'm going to start focusing on different wine growing regions that need to be talked about that we see on the American market. The first appellation I'm going to talk about is Coteau du Languedoc. The Coteau du Languedoc is a very large appellation in the Languedoc. It takes up the majority of this area. But before we talk about that particular appellation, let me just give you a little idea of the varietals that work in this area. Traditionally, there was a grape called Carignan, and this was grown all over the Languedoc. And it's a very, it can be very good. The thing is, it's just a really tough varietal to get a nice, memorable wine out of. It's very astringent, and sometimes it can be a little bit out of balance. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a, a theme that's been happening in Languedoc throughout its history. At a certain point in history, they added some more grapes to these appellations to kind of give people and give winemakers a way of establishing their own identity. These grapes, some of them we all know. Syrah, which we all love, it's personally my favorite. And then a grape called Mavedra, or Maved. And another little grape called Sanso, which is a blending varietal used mostly in the Rhone Valley. But, ladies and gentlemen, the star of the Languedoc region's new improving varietals, Grenache Noir! All right, it's from all around the Texas. Grenache Noir is so hot right now. I know, so hot. The area of the Languedoc is mostly a red wine region, but there are some white wines being made in the area, which I'll talk about in a second. So those grapes that I just mentioned are grapes that throughout the Languedoc, Roussillon, are used in different blends to make different wines to identify the different areas in which the wines are made. Why is this? Because the Languedoc has a lot of microclimates, a lot of the different soil compositions throughout the whole Mediterranean and in inland, and different grapes in that list do best with certain percentages. For example, I'm going to talk about two areas in the Coteau du Languedoc that are prominent on the American market. There are a lot of little sub-appellations in communes in the Coteau du Languedoc but the two that we all know, or that you'll see in wine shops or in, on wine lists, are a place called Pique saint Lou and a place called Pique Poule du Pinay. Okay, so within the Languedoc, in this, in, within this large appellation, the Coteau du Languedoc, there is that place called Montpellier that I talked about, which is where the university is, which they, they studied the phylloxera and all this really cool stuff. North of Montpellier is an area called Pique saint Lou. There's a mountain called Pique saint Lou there. The beauty of this is the mountain is made of limestone. And down in the valley of the mountain, it's limestone and clay. Why is this important? Because these two elements in soil are great for the varietals in which they are made there. So Pique saint Lou is a small little sub-appellation, a small little commune north of Montpellier in the Côte du Languedoc that does their own variation of the Syrah, Mavedra, and Grenache. This area is very important because it is an area, when I was talking last time about how the Côte du Languedoc, the, the Languedoc Roussillon is in flux, is because this area will soon be its own appellation, but for now, it's a sub-appellation and a larger appellation, otherwise known as a commune. But it's going to be very soon, there's going to be an appellation called Pique saint Lou. What is it about Pique saint Lou that's awesome? It's very age-worthy. The vines have to be a little bit older than other appellations in the area. They have to be six years old to start harvesting grapes. Other areas in Languedoc say three. The grapes that are grown in this area that are allowed in this little AOC or sub-appellation, it has to be 90% of what they call improving varieties, Syrah, Mavedra, 
and uh, Grenache. It has to be 90% of that, and then the rest of it can be other grapes that are in the area. Then you have the soil. The soil is this beautiful limestone and clay. See, what's, what clay does is it retains water very well, but it sometimes will drown the vines. But what it also does is it's very cool. Now, you take that element and you put limestone on top of that, limestone is a really good retention and release soil. So you put clay, which keeps it cool and retains water, and you have limestone, which re release, like, retains and releases very well. You have a wonderful, wonderful marriage of soil for great wine. And what that produces is beautiful, age-worthy wines in an area that is just now coming onto the American market. And we will be seeing very soon a new appellation. Languedoc Roussillon is majority of this area is a red wine producing region. But there's one place in the Coteau du Languedoc that does only white wine. Well, they do some red wine, but the white wine is the majority and it's the one we're going to see all over the American market. No matter where you're at, you're probably going to see a bottle like this from southern France. This is a grape called Pique Poule. If you start traveling from Pique saint Lou down to Montpellier, and then you start traveling southwest, you're going to run into the Mediterranean. But before you hit the Mediterranean, you're going to run into a lagoon. And just north of this lagoon is a place called Pinay. And it's a little town. And they have become famous for their Pique Poule. They actually have their own little appellation called Pique Poule du Pinay. And this area has soils that are just rampant with fossils and clean draining combinations. So what we have is a very crispy, lean, very, very minerally white wine. It is perfect for summer. One interesting fact about Peak Pool, it actually neutralizes the saltiness in seafood, allowing you to taste more of the seafood. People du Pinay is, everyone's like, drink it with oysters, drink it with anchovies, drink it with shellfish, because it will balance and neutralize those foods and allow you to enjoy more of the seafood. So you have Pic Poule du Pinay, which is an appellation in the southern part of the Coteau du Languedoc that does only white wine. And again, these wines are very affordable, between like eight and $15. Another really fun little fact about Pic Poule du Pinay, the great Pic Poule, the reason they call it that is because it translates very roughly into English as lip stinger because it's so crispy and so vibrant. So this is us getting deeper into the Languedoc Roussillon. While you're waiting for the next video, go out, buy some Pique saint Lou, buy some people du Pinay, and next week we're going to talk about saint chinian and Fougere. We're close, slowly working our way down to Roussillon. See you next week. Thank you, thank you. Wine to the people.